So guys, today I'm back with another video equipment review and I have today for you the newer T210, which is a mini travel tripod. Uh, very handy if, you're, if you have a big tripod uh, such as me, like the Manfrotto, it can get very, very heavy. So that's why in today's product review, I'm gonna take a closer look at this uh, really, really compact, a budget kind of version. And as you can see in the navigation below, basically what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna do an unboxing. I'm gonna show you what's inside the package. I'm sure I'm gonna show you a little bit of the build quality and basically gonna deliver you a bunch of close-up shots so that you can really see what the manufacturing quality of this thing is. Then in part two, uh, I'm gonna go ahead, maybe go outside and do a few test shots, uh, put the little tripod to its paces maybe for a couple of days and then what I'm especially going to look for is since uh, these budget tripods usually have a head that is more gear geared towards photography, we're going to see what kind of smooth video shots we can get out of it when we make these uh, motion, when we turn the camera angle a little bit, will it be a smooth buttery motion or will it not be that good? So that, that's kind of always something I look out for. Obviously, if you're only into photography, that might not be as relevant to you. And then after testing the tripod in part three, I'm gonna give you my personal conclusion whether I think this is a useful accessory uh, for your video uh, productions. So in any case, uh, even if you're only doing photography, maybe you just uh, watch the unboxing and you can always use the navigation below. So let's get rolling with the unboxing. So the first thing we obviously have to do is maybe take this out of the box and see what we can find inside. Kind of curious what I can expect. I mean, I had newer products before, like the newer microphones. So maybe I'm gonna show you the overview here. Uh, it should be pretty straightforward, not much to say. Um, I'm, the interesting part is when I test this here, you have like these two uh, flips to extend the legs of the tripod. And what's this, VIP, very important. And obviously the notice again from the company that your satisfaction is important, which is always nice to know. Uh, apparently they're gonna give you some sort of carrying bag, which can be handled if you wanna transport it. So guys, I just uh, took this uh, tripod out of its bag and uh, one thing that uh, totally uh, caught my attention was like, this seems to be pretty, for the size of this small tripod, this seems to be very, very big. Uh, so maybe if you have big hands, that's kind of useful, but maybe I would have liked to see this a little bit smaller right here. Other than that, maybe I can just put the tripod on the table for you guys and show you the, the top plate where you usually attach the ca camera. That seems to be very, very snappy right here. And uh, yeah, I mean, you, you notice that since it's a budget tripod, the build quality is uh, significantly lower than when you compare it like to like a more expensive, maybe let's say Manfrotto B3, I think it's called. For example, this is also like a plastic part. So I'm wondering, I mean, I don't know how reliable that is, but I'm wondering maybe this is prone to wear out or break at some point. And if I put this in, it's not completely snapping into place. I think I have to push it uh, for it to be, completely seated um, and uh, yeah what else uh, so if I loosen this I can basically move it up and down and uh, there's a fair amount of resistance but uh, I doubt you can make uh, smooth video shots with this so it's like I suspect that it's probably more more geared towards the hobby photographer with like a entry-level camera and uh, personally for me uh, since I'm obviously using um, obviously only shooting video and doing almost no photography at all um, the ability to have like smooth camera motion is uh, important because like if, if I now push here uh, it may look reasonably smooth um, but trust me I've tested it with other tripods before if you, if you make this kind of motion it will be somewhat jittery especially if you zoom in a little bit it will really amplify this jittery effect so um, my guess is if you want to do video you probably want to look for something that has a fluid head um, other than that i i really can't complain uh, build quality looks reasonable for, i mean for the price the build quality is good um no question about it um 
this seems to be aluminum right here. And as you can see, you can extend it to quite some length. Um, if you loosen this part up here, uh, use, this is like a crazy mechanism, by the way. Um, you can extend it out even more. So maybe I am just gonna show you like an overview shot because that doesn't fit in the frame anymore. So for demonstration purposes, I extended out all these uh, three tripod legs and uh, raised this uh, middle part. And as you can see, um, for photography, it's it's quite a nice thing. If you if you put it together, it's really, really super compact. And taking every, every single part fully extended, it, it can raise to quite some height. So for photography, I would give it a thumbs up. For video, I would be more like cautious and look for something that has a fluid head. But hey, again, it's, it's like a budget tripod. So what do you expect? I would say build quality looks kind of decent. What I'm really wondering right now is like, maybe you guys, what guys, by the way, what do you think about this uh, Trump policy on the China trade? Are there gonna be tariffs on products like this as well? Uh, maybe all the Amazon dropshipping guys are gonna be like really disappointed when they figure out that all their merchandise from China has raised prices. But uh, hey, maybe you're gonna get, have more quality gear made in the US. I'm really curious what's developing. I'm located in Europe, so it's kind of interesting to watch this from overseas. Uh, but hey guys, I probably digress since this is just a uh, affordable tripod review in not a political debate about trade policy. But I find it a little bit ironic. Um, I believe that back in the day, there was like this guy who wrote the book Currency Wars and he described in that book in the first chapters how there was a red cell group i think from the pentagon or something and they did all the economic warfare modeling so it's kind of like a little bit hilarious that years later the red cell group um, um financial warfare modeling um oh i think they call it war gaming but like you you catch my point guys i have friends uh, both in the us and in china so um, i find it really unfortunate that they people cannot come to the table and find like a reasonable agreement i think that would produce the best outcome but hey um uh before i digress any further um further um, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to jump to the next part, to part two, and I'm going to go outside maybe in a, today or in a few days and do some of the test shots because I really want to see how the video, video performance is off a cheap tripod like that. Uh, see whether I can produce reasonably smooth shots. And then I'm going to come to part three, the conclusion. So uh, I see you in the next part with the test footage. Uh, so guys, as you can see, I have uh, went outside. We are now in the part, next part where I test the tripod. Um, I went down to the waterfront and I'm just going to do a slow motion upward very carefully to see how the tripod head performs. And from all I can say, it's like a surprisingly good result. So guys, next up I'm going to do a sidewards motion very carefully uh, with the tip of my finger to see whether that also operates relatively smoothly. And as to be expected, it does not perform like a fluid head, but if you're a little bit careful, you can still make a fairly nice uh, motion with this. So. So guys, the only downside, uh, oh, there's a boat coming by, that maybe I can catch that, by the way, uh, that I can see so far, is that this uh, tripod is not very tall. So, let's see how it performs when I zoom in. It's kind of interesting. We're gonna turn into boat hunters. Like, if you had a fluid head, um, that would be really nice right now, um, because obviously, as more as you zoom in, uh, the tougher it gets to make this smooth motion. So, well guys, as you can see, uh, I'm absolutely surprised. Um, the only downside is like this thing, uh, I hope you can see this down there, it's really super tiny. I mean like you not get a lot of height. So uh, that's really like a struggle. Um, most people who do video probably will want to have this tripod 
to be higher. Maybe in the conclusion part, um, I'm gonna take a measurement of the total height so that you can see that. So maybe I do a few more test shots and then we jump to the conclusion. So let's see what else I can find today. In case maybe a good uh, way to illustrate the size of the tripod is like I put it uh, next to the park bench and as you can see it's like literally just the height of the uh, of this bench where you would usually sit in a park so it's really really tiny tripod and while it is a disadvantage that it's so small it's also an advantage because that gives you a really really super lightweight tripod and guys I carry this around I have the Ken EOS M in my bag and obviously the Ken EOS M is not mirrorless so I have a very uh, lightweight compact camera and while I was walking through the park, I carried the tripod with me and it's barely noticeable. So compare that to my Mount Frodo, which probably would be that high. Uh, and uh, I, the Mount Frodo is like a really heavy tripod. So uh, that's basically the trade-off that you're facing. Uh, and guys, while well, the opportunity presents itself, maybe we do some more boat hunting. Um, it's kind of nice. I mean, you see the ducks there and the boat. I mean, let's see what I can follow that. It's a little bit far away, but yeah, I mean, it's a small, trusty little tripod and you see the images look really, really nice. Uh, I'm enjoying this right now a lot. Which actually is surprising. Uh, I wouldn't have thought that. Um, yeah, guys, so that uh, concludes the test footage. Um, the sun is disappearing on me and I think the ducks are also going to go uh, to sleep soon. Um, let's jump to the conclusion part, which I again going to shoot tomorrow. And uh, that concludes the review of this newer T210 tripod. Yeah, guys, some time has passed, and now we're going to come to the conclusion part of my review of this mini tripod, the newer T210. And one thing I promised that I'm going to show you is the height of this tripod so I'm just gonna measure this with some of this measurement tape because like I uh, mentioned earlier the the size is uh, the only downside that I could find so far and here you can see it measures 61 centimeters and I believe that should be uh, comparable to uh, if you're in the US to about 24 inch in height so it's really not that uh, much of a tall tri uh, tripod and as long as you keep that height limitation in mind, I mean, for what it's worth, for the smaller height, you really get a super compact and lightweight tripod. Because like I mentioned earlier, uh, while I was carrying my camera bag, my Canon camera bag in one hand with my EOS M3, the mirrorless camera, which in and of itself is really, really lightweight because it's a mirrorless camera. So I really felt like a camera bag in one hand, tripod in the other hand, the camera bag was uh, with the included accessories uh, felt heavier so for what it's worth you get a super lightweight tripod and what surprised me was the tripod head because as you've seen like when I followed these boats on the lake um, the, it, the tripod produced a surprisingly smooth video shots uh, when uh, tilting the tripod so that's something I didn't expect at all from a budget tripod like this which obviously doesn't have the fluid head uh, like for example my Manfrotto tripod has because like this is like a really advanced fluid head so with the with a fluid head you usually can uh, produce far superior motions but uh, yeah I probably say but a hundred times but I, you kind of kind of know what I mean in any case this concludes the review of the tripod uh, on my YouTube channel since you watched this video I have a lot of other videos about audio and video equipment and I can display this to you here because since you're interested in a tripod, there is a certain likelihood that you might also be interested in watching reviews about my digital camera. I have several camera reviews, which cameras you can use for YouTube and also audio equipment like lavalier microphones. And you can find reviews for those on my channel as well. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, I see you as a subscriber on my channel and in the next video. All the best to you guys, uh, take care. Uh, and yeah, since you watched this review of the newer tripod, you may also be interested in some other video equipment that I have, such as this uh, Ken EOS M that, by the way, I also used to film this review. And actually, I'm super surprised how many people have already subscribed to my YouTube channel because of the useful content that I provide here. And you can subscribe right now as well. Um, I see you in the next video and even, maybe even in one of my online courses. Until then, take care.